Hey, this is Marsha Ambrosius hanging out with my girl Angie. He's a cute note, he's a cute note, he's a cute note TV. The I was infatuated by sound at a very early age. It wasn't necessarily my mother was a singer or my dad was a singer. My dad was in a band and he played bass guitar and lead guitar for a while. And um, I was surrounded by great music. My mother has a vinyl collection that my DJ should be jealous of. Oh. Yes, DJ, I said he will be jealous of my mother's <laughs> vinyl collection. I need to listen to everything. So I think I was very influenced by that good music. You know, and I think growing up, that definitely helped with how I shaped my sound. My three favorites being Prince, Stevie, and Michael Jackson. That's no secret. And um, you have a new, unique sound. I, well, <laughs> nobody was nobody wasn't trying to create um, noise. I wasn't mm -hmm. trying to sing like anyone else. I was trying to sing the harp melody or the strings or wow. just something that the saxophone would do at mm -hmm. some point mm -hmm. in a record. I was never trying to mimic a singer I just enjoyed the composition and the sound so I think with that I found myself When you did that tribute to Patty, so, so beautiful. You first started writing. What was your first song you did? Was it, was it the Michael Jackson song? It was called, or, well, it was called Gonna Get Ya. Mm -hmm. I was eight years old, seven or eight years old, and it was about a boy that I had a crush on, and it, it definitely, butterflies definitely derived from that notion. I just kicked it up a notch as I was a little older and understood what butterflies meant. I guess when you're a kid, you just know that this boy makes me feel funny <laughs> when I see him, so. You know, over the years, I fine-tuned my craft, and yeah, it became butterflies. Because you wrote for so many people, that that's amazing. Right. How did you sell your first song? How did you get that exposure to even get to I get it to that person? It was that was never in the cards for me. I happened to have a publisher in the the UK. They didn't do anything with the work. It was just registered work and I took a trip to Philadelphia well by ways of Atlanta to do a poetry gig that my friend Robert had put me a part of because he had a tape cassette of a performance I did in London and I just happened to meet the right people right time and they loved the work that I did and a part of the demo to shop for Flow Tree's first album Butterflies happened to be on there and the guy that signed us to DreamWorks was Michael Jackson's personal manager. Wow. Michael Jackson was working on Invincible and I was like, oh, that's why I had a crush on that boy yeah. that worked at McDonald's when I was 16 and wow. he'll never know that that song was about him. Wow. <laughs> What has been your biggest challenge in the industry? Um, life's a challenge, so I never attack the industry as a challenge. It's work. I go to work, mm -hmm. and if I'm faced with an obstacle, I overcome that. And I think when people go into it having expected an, an up and down, it's just everyday life. So for yeah. me, it's just the continual journey of being able to grow within the industry. <laughs> Love you, Michael. Yeah, I got to talk about Michael too. Fuck it. 
just want to know if you're into big dudes, big dudes, big dudes, because I love you. Do you like big guys? Because there's some guys out there checking for you. Big guys have been tall or Tall big? and big. Well, the guy oh. that asked named Dwayne, he was tall <laughs> and big. So Dwayne in particular, <laughs> the big, big and Dwayne. And it's his birthday. Hi, Big D. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Yes, I like a big man, if that's what we're talking about. I mean, <laughs> fat, skinny, tall men, I love them all. <laughs> Do you feel like success has changed you? Not even a little bit. No. It should have, and even with people that are surrounding me now, that have been with me from the very beginning of my career, have seen the outside of everything change around me because I'm viewed as somewhat of a celebrity, which is so weird because I like to do things that are normal, and it's not normal for me anymore. <laughs> no, but I love it. Do you think that you and Floetry, excuse me, you and Natalie are going to do your duo Floetry, do a tour or anything like that? I strongly doubt it. It was really a moment in my career that, you know, when I decided to do Floetry, I wanted a poet on the music that I created, and that worked 1999 through 2006 till she left the group. Three albums in, you know, it's just a, a journey, and we wanted different things out of life. So when she left the group to pursue her thing, I did so with mine. And, <coughs> I'm comfortable with that. Well, you have a lot of fans of your first album, which congratulations on Late Nights, Early Mornings. Thank you. Love it. And um, another fan out there said he would just, he would love to wake up to that with you. So Aww. you have so many fans out there. That's so sweet. <laughs> Music, you know, TV.